viewers and learners of the postgraduate diploma in environmental and occupational health. Today we will discuss on the topic personal care products industry. This forms a part of the course MEVE 004 industrial sector. So all of us are using various personal care products in daily life. So the personal care products include toothpaste, your face washes, soaps, shampoos, you know, and several other of the uh, cleaning agents that we are using. They also include your lotions, moisturizers, and so on. So now there is some amount of environmental awareness and we are aware of the chemicals that go into making all these products. So these industries also, they generate a lot of waste, a lot of chemical waste which can be toxic and some of them have also been reported to be carcinogenic and uh, teratogenic in nature. And uh, we will also see some of the uh, cleaner mechanisms and how people are also shifting on to the uh, vegan forms of these products or they are also preferring the uh, labeling standards. They want the standards to be in the place so that they can make the safe choices. After listening to this lecture, you should be able to understand the different types of chemicals that go into the processing of the personal products industry and the various environmental and occupational, some of the occupational hazards that are encountered in this industry. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Baska, working in the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University. So the personal care industry, these manufacture the products which are supposed to improve the quality of life and they are also uh, supposed to enhance the aesthetics of the human body. The common products that are manufactured by the personal care industry, they range from a wide variety of the cosmetics, the moisturizers, the lipsticks, you can have fragrances and the perfumes, the shampoos, the hair colors, the deodorants, the toothpaste, lotions, soaps, sunscreen, menstrual care products. Now many of us have uh, the age related graying of the hair and some of them you know would like to just age gracefully and leave it as such but some of us also are using some kind of a chemical in order to tan those uh, hair strands. So maybe going for the natural products like henna or leaving it as such you know that would be much uh, better solution rather than using certain harmful chemicals which we will see in the further slides that that can also have certain uh, cancerous effects that can even lead to some kind of tumors and so on in the body. So these are all some kinds of the skin irritants and uh, they can be absorbed by the skin and then deposited here and there even in the fat tissue and so on. So we need to make the careful choices and the industry itself also has to change uh, these uh, you know the chemical based ones into some kind of natural products based. The waste generated by these personal care industries they are produced during the different stages of their production and uh, sometimes we will see that the waste when they are you know being thrown off we will see that that will also contain certain expired and outdated or even unused personal care products. So we need to be careful of these things also. Now the occupational hazards of workers who are working both in the pharmaceutical and in the personal care industry because that is why it is ref clubbed together and referred to as the PPCI and they experience a number of the occupational hazards. Many are biological hazards because sometimes you know they may take the natural products from the biological organisms themselves and that can uh, give rise to certain irritations. Then the chemical toxic substances themselves that could be used for the coloring agents or uh, that could be used in uh, various other like for example the uh, preservative forms and so on. Then the physical uh, equipments that are used, the heat and other physical hazards that also the employees can face of certain, uh, certain problems. In the same way electrical, mechanical, these hazards are also there in such industries when they are doing it in the large scale. Uh, and different employees are working in the different sectors of the industry. So for example, the packaging uh, section. So here again, you know, they may be um, using um, plastic covers or they may be using the plastic bottles, even metal and steel containers. So then uh, they can be very sharp instruments that can even lead to certain cuts and bruises. Then there are also psychological hazards associated in this industry. So psychological sometimes, you know, people may be working for more than 8 to 10 hours in one shift. And uh, they may have this uh, job target completion 
that you know this product has to be released by Christmas time or this product has to be released before the new year or during Diwali. So in that case, uh, when, when you're coming up with some um, innovative ideas and some innovative products, then they, they, that could also lead to some kind of stress and uh, psychological hazards. And then when one company outbeats another, when there is competition between two companies, then again, if one fails to uh, come up to the standards and perform better than the other, then again, people uh, get some kinds of psychological uh, depression, hazards and stress and so on. So these are some of the occupational hazards that are faced in these industries. Again, the chemicals, you know, because in some cases, there may be even coating of some of the uh, materials with certain toxic chemicals. That again, when the employees are packaging or they are making them, then again, they may be exposed to several types of these toxic elements. Now, when we talk about the machinery and the equipment, so these are all there in the workplace environments and uh, especially in these kind of industries, extensive use of chemicals are definitely being used. Therefore, the workers are vulnerable to chronic health risk due to the exposure to the chemicals during synthesis operation. And these chemicals, as we have already discussed even before in various other sessions, they can affect the eyes, the skin, the body tissues, etc. And prolonged exposure to such chemicals, they may cause various ailments such as the liver damage, cancer, kidney problems, lung infections and so on. Coming on to the environmental hazards. So almost 50 years back, the environmentalists started assessing the threat of the personal care products to the environment. These products, sometimes they are even unused or as I told you, they could be expired products, you know, which they are actually produced in uh, lump sum and then uh, they are just uh, dumped into the ground as landfills and the waste effluents are then let off into the streams. Therefore, contamination of the groundwater, the surface water and the soils, this has been an environmental concern and it has an adverse effect on the aquatic life. This may also adversely affect the marine ecosystems. Study on the frogs. You know, this uh, re uh, research report, this indicates that there is slow development due to the effect of the antidepressants in the water and also in the soil. Then there are also indications of reduction of fertility in the rainbow trout, which breed in such contaminated chemical waters. So all these are some examples which have been observed by various scientists. They can also accumulate in the food chain and then cause harm. Therefore, choosing the personal care products with the fewer ingredients that may reduce risk from the harmful chemicals. So some chemical ingredients, that is, it could be in the makeup, it could be in the skin, in the hair care product, that can cause health risk such as allergic reactions, hair loss, asthma and cancers. Chemicals, especially those that are known as parabens and phthalates, they are extensively used in lotions, in nail polishes and other products. They can disrupt the hormonal system and they mimic the endocrine system and they can cause reproductive and health issues. And it is now reported that there is a potential link between the use of talc and ovarian cancer risk. So all this, from this, we are understanding that now people are shifting on to those products which have the natural goodness. So the skin care, you know, this alone every day morning, we apply, you know, several layers of these chemicals to our skin. So it could be using your uh, face washes, then after that you use some astringent, then some lotions, then maybe a makeup material, you know, then some, um, maybe some uh, eyeshadows and eyeliners, then again some lipstick. So all these skin care alone, this can account for approximately 45% of the overall cosmetic product sales globally. So people are refraining now from using these chemical paraben and sulfate laden products. So even now when you go to the shops, you can find the shampoos and other uh, substances which say that this is sulphate free, these are paraben free. So now people have become conscious of these eco labeling and the, uh, they want that these labels should be in order so that they can make the right choices while purchasing. So users are gradually inclining towards those brands that are using the naturally sourced or plant made constituents for the skincare routines. Such products will not harm the skin anatomy or the skin health and it can also provide the power of the antioxidant rich superfoods. And of course in the same way it will not harm the environment as well. Now the chemical exposure to these cosmetics has also been linked to rising rates in the breast cancer, in asthma, autism and reproductive problems and other health issues in the uh, people. Let us now take some uh, case studies. Health issues with lead in the lipstick. 
Now in the lipsticks, the, those colors that are very dark, which is red, uh, maroon or which is you know um, the uh, bright um, magenta in color, all this is supposedly uh, to contain more amounts of the lead. And in 2007 to 2009, there were you know, several of the safe uh, campaign agencies who conducted a lot of research and uh, the FDA also did a lot of research and they reported quite an alarming uh, composition uh, constituent of the lead in these lipsticks, even in the most popular brands. So therefore, lead in lipstick is of serious concern because lead is a neurotoxicant. It can cross a blood-brain barrier. It is a nephrotoxicant. It can also lead to certain kidney disorders and malformities. So lead is really a heavy metal and it is toxic in nature. Now look at this figure. So in this alone, you find that the lipsticks contain uh, methyl paraben. It contains acetate. It contains red 22 certain colorants and also polyparabens. So methyl paraben. This is usually a preservative that is used in many of the beauty products and that is linked to cancer. They disrupt the endocrine system and they have a toxic high hazard level. Polyparabens, they definitely irritate the skin. The colorants such as DNC red 36, DNC red 22, aluminium lake, all this they can damage the nervous system and cause a lot of health hazards. Tocopherol acetate, this is again known as vitamin E acetate, it causes itching, burning, scaling and also skin blistering. Now when we talk about the lead in the lipstick, in this figure you can see that very high amounts of lead is causing encephalopathy, nephropathy, you know it can cause a lot of other colic and um, disturbances and also the um, decreased hemoglobin synthesis. So this is a proven neurotoxin, there are behavioral problems which are associated with lead and uh, the people who have an amount of lead in their body, they say that they have a low IQ quotient or an intelligent quotient. They have increased aggression. Pregnant women, especially the young children, are also vulnerable to the lead as the lead can easily cross the placental barrier and it can enter the fetal brain and interfere with the normal development. So lead is a very toxic element which is used in the lip colorants. Next, coming on to the keratin hair straighteners. So this also when you go to the saloon, they use a high amount of the high levels of formaldehyde and then you get this flat ironed hair which comes out as a process. So this is incredibly toxic, okay, because heat is applied to the hair with this straightening solution, with these chemical containing solutions. And this causes the formaldehyde in that product to off gas into the air of the saloon. So many of them have complained of severe irritation to the eyes, nose and the throat and long term exposure especially those uh, workers and occupational hazard of the people who are working in these beauty saloons, they have reported that they get cancers. The saloon workers have also reported that they contain nose bleeds, stinging eyes and also they have the hair loss which is reported. Hair dyes, here again you know many of them like to look young and uh, are not able to accept the fact that the hair strands are you know graying as a result of the aging process which is very natural. But then what happens in the process when you start applying the hair dyes you know which is used by millions of women we, why we now find that there are increased number of reports and these chemicals that are linked to these hair dye chemicals that are causing this cancer. So there are the secondary amines which can be found in the hair dyes and that is used by millions of the people. Both the home coloring kits and the saloon uh, dyes, they can contain the chemicals and they can react with the smoke and also the fumes and then they can form the highly poisonous chemicals. Now when we talk about the chemical hair dyes, you know this again causes a lot of environmental pollution because from the uh, saloons themselves, definitely those waters are actually going out okay? and then it is entering the system because they are not, pre they are not going, undergoing any kind of a treatment. So uh, this again will cause you health problems. So a lot of colors, you know, you find uh, red and these days you find the youngsters and even the elderly also, they like to try on different colors like blue, uh, then uh, you have a white, then you have the uh, gray, uh, green, you know, black, uh, different colors are being applied to the hair to give a different uh, uh, look, you know. So then again, where are all these uh, dyes ending up, okay? Everything is ending up in your environment, which is nothing but your own surroundings. So all this again, when you are drinking such 
uh, polluted water when you are drinking uh, or inhaling such polluted air that can lead to increased uh, when, when it comes in contact with your skin you can have increased dermatitis cancer depigmentation rheumatoid arthritis and respiratory ailments so all the hair colors they contain the term resorcinol and the hair colors which are even ammonia free they contain ethanol amine the secondary amines this can actually remain for years after the dye is applied and that can again react with the smoke and the fumes and then this can form the toxic N nitroso amines. So you see the amount of chemicals that are coming out from these dyes. Understanding the types and the dangers of resorcinol in the hair color. Now there are these color couplers that are oxidizing with the hydrogen peroxide. This can cause acute breathing changes, nausea and then again vomiting. This can also enter the blood when the open wounds are present on the head. Then it, can, it could be deposited in the fat cells and they are highly carcinogenic in nature and it should never be used by the pregnant women. The next component which is used in this personal care industry is sodium lauryl sulphate, the SLS or the sodium laureth uh, sulphate that is SLES. Cosmetics, toothpaste, hair conditioners, 90% of all the shampoos that contain and that foam, the foaming products, they contain this uh, SLS and SLES. That can cause severe eye damage, depression, diarrhea, severe skin irritation, corrosion and death. So the SLS can even stay up to 5 days in the body. So after application, after 5 days also. Sometimes you might have wondered even when your hair, uh, after using your hair conditioner, and then um, when you are traveling or when you are you know even walking when the hair strands start even rubbing your cheeks you find that you know you feel like itching or there is some kind of an irritation it is all because of these chemicals which are causing that uh, dermatitic uh, reactions parabens so these are extensively used as preservatives in the lotions and in the shampoo they are nothing but endocrine disruptors and let me tell you that these can mimic the estrogen in the body Higher estrogen exposures, these again are linked to the higher risk of the breast cancer. Now another three of the important components which are used in this industry are the DEA, MEA and TEA. So what are these? So DEA is diethanolamine, MEA is monoethanolamine and TEA is triethanolamine. These are also extensively used in the bubble bath, in shampoos, in soaps and the facial cleansers. This has also resulted in a major increase in the incidence of two cancers, basically liver and the kidney cancers. Phthalates. This is a plasticizers and they are found in the nail polish, in synthetic fragrance and the plastic packaging. They are also hormone disrupting chemicals and they have been linked to early puberty in the girls, which is a risk factor and for later life breast cancer. So this is the uh, structure of the phthalate that you can see. And uh, some of the phthalates can also act as a weak estrogens in the cell, cell culture systems. So the big three which are used in these um, nail polishes, they include the formaldehyde, the toluene and the dibutyl phthalate. So they are all the toxic chemicals and uh, we should be careful uh, in picking the right nail polish or the colors which are suitable uh, for our health. So sunscreen and the baby products. Here again you would have seen in the uh, daily news and some of the magazines that the sunscreen and the baby products, they are also had some problems and some of the companies also were uh, roped into this and therefore choosing the safe baby products is also very important for the uh, mothers and the gestationing uh, women. Uh, then uh, this also they reported that you know it interfered with some kind of the uh, problem where it was the skin of the baby was blocked with that material and um, it was hampering the absorption uh, process properly of the skin. So these uh, screen, sunscreen or the baby product they behave like estrogens and uh, they have also been shown to make some breast cancer cells proliferate. Then the one of the campaign for the safe cosmetics in March 2009 which was a uh, long time back they found two chemicals that were linked to cancer in some of the products that were launched then that included the 1,4 dioxane and formaldehyde in dozens let me tell you of the bath products for the babies and the skins so therefore even choosing the safe baby product you know and um, maybe going for going for the very natural and the homemade products are good like maybe coconut oil or you know the uh, oil or the creams that our uh, mothers and grandmothers make at home using the natural products from the plants themselves or from ghee that is the best for the baby and even the uh, the uh, butter which we churn out from the 
uh, milk and the milk products that is also a safer alternative rather than choosing these baby products therefore now the companies have come up with the eco-friendly outlook research says that the vegan and environmentally sustainable market this is going to set and reach uh, the 20.8 billion US dollars by 2025 globally. So consumers are also trying to stay clear of those goods that are sourced from the unethical means and uh, that are embracing the cruelty free and the vegan products. Vegan products are gaining popularity because of their superior content also. Packaging of the waste is also a very important factor which we have to understand in these industries. So if you have seen many of these shampoos and all these you know, uh, face washes or the chemical compounds, they are all coming in the plastic bottles. Because when we keep glass bottle in the uh, toiletries and in the washrooms, then again there is a chance that these bottles can also break. So more than 120 billion units of these packaging are produced globally every year by the cosmetic industry and that itself is contributing to a loss of 18 million acres of the forest annually. So cosmetic is a very fast moving industry and it is creating noticeable waste and uh, again in even in the face mask we would have seen that now they are using the single sheet use sheet mask. So the, the solutions could be by offering a minimal but a beautiful beauty product which can actually have everything in one. It could be a moisturizer, you know, a, a sunscreen, a, a pack or, or your um, uh, the powder everything which comes as an all-in-one product so that would be best because then you just have to have one uh, packet and one uh, beauty material or one beauty item which you are having in your home plastic is the no number one enemy of this industry and uh, let me tell you almost half a million tons of it is being produced every year and 91 percent of this it does not get recycled so though this is also a global crisis, it is also a collective responsibility that we all have to deal with. There are a number of ways to increase the environmental awareness and reduce this footprint of our daily habits. And uh, we don't have to look very far because our daily plastic journey, it is just starting as soon as we wake up every morning. The beauty and the personal care product industry is one among those that is actually damaging the environment, the marine wildlife and it is contaminating the human food supply chain. Excess packaging. Here again the beauty industry this is creating 120 billion units of packaging every year. And the packaging is a number one contributor to the plastic production in the world and uh, offender for the plastic waste pollution. In the year 2015, research found that packaging accounted for 146 million tons of the plastic every year. So plastic alone is not the only waste which is created in the name of beauty and personal, but it also creates excess of the cellophane uh, material which is also surrounded uh, by that. Then again we have the cardboard and also the paper waste because you know anything even if it is a toothpaste or even if it is a uh, any kind of a tube then again that is also put into a cardboard uh, material or a paper uh, bag or a paper material. So all this is nothing but waste. The paper board boxes these are again wrapped in shiny transparent plastic cover and already like packaged creams and toothpaste that do not contain that uh, basically do not require another layer of the material but again these products will be made more expensive for the manufacturer and also for the consumer and that way it will also lead to deforestation increasing water consumption and the co2 emissions so you know it is all basically a cycle where the environment the human health everything is being uh, impacted Although it is easier and safer to transport and store, you know, when you are putting them into these paper cardboard boxes and it is also visually more appeal appealing when you try to buy them from the shelf. But uh, these like toothpaste and all other products, they do not require, you know, another packaging of these boxes. It is not basically a necessity. So we need to see whether it is required or it is not and uh, use the uh, power of discretion whether it is really required or not. Recycling finally, so all the packaging should be reusable, recyclable and or compostable if they are made from the bioplastic that can also disintegrate over time. The smallest beauty terror that harms the environment, this is nothing but the microplastics. Okay, so you have seen in the scrubs, here the microplastics are being used and they also contain plastic particles. They are smaller than 5 millimeters in diameter. This could be in the form of the micro bead or plastic fibers and they are found in the clothing, in cosmetic, in cleaning products and the personal care products such as toothpaste and also the soap. Now, the water filtering systems, they are not designed to sift the elements which are smaller than the 5 millimeter. 
So therefore, these particles, they will contaminate the water in the ocean and finally they end up being consumed by the fishes, by the birds and also by the marine animals. So this microplastic, shockingly, we have seen that that is also entering the bottled water and once that is consumed, that could also be a potential contribution and risk to the cancers. The US was the first country to ban the microbeads and uh, this country, it has been followed by the United Kingdom, France, Canada, Taiwan, Italy, New Zealand and also many other countries. So trillions of these tiny pieces of plastic, they are accumulating in the world's oceans, in the lakes, in the estuaries, thereby they are harming the marine life and they are also entering the food chains. So biodegradable plastic, this is an environmental friendlier uh, plastic as it can also eventually degrade. There are also a number of other alternatives to microplastic like you can use the sand or the beeswax, honey, the nuts, seeds, sugar, salt, oatmeal, ground coffee and the ground fruit kernels. So these uh, things, you know, they have uh, many of these uh, natural microplastics, they have been used and a lot of the uh, cosmetic brands like Unilever, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, The Body Shop, some of these companies have uh, turned to the eco-friendly products and they have committed to eliminating the microbeads from their products. So, but there are actually no uh, proper solutions for cleaning the microbeads out of the lakes, the rivers and the oceans. Therefore, prevention is so crucial in protecting the environment and also its habitants. So, my dear learners, in this session, we have understood about the waste that are generated from the personal care industry. We also understood a lot of health hazards that are coming from using some of the products which contain sulfates, parabens, phthalates and so on. We have also seen some of the occupational hazards, for example, the saloon workers who are working and how they can also have a lot of problems related to using the hair dyes uh, and the other cancerous problems. Again, we have also seen how these colorants and other microbeads, they are also entering the environment without proper treatment and then again these microbeads also, they cannot be eliminated completely from the environment and how these are also choking the aquatic and the animal, the marine environmental uh, animals living out there. So it is up to us to make the proper choice and uh, we need to shift to more um, uh, vegan form of lifestyles and also to the natural forms where we can use the natural products like for example turmeric. A very simple use of using the natural turmeric, you can apply it to your skin and it makes you glow. In the same way, you can use the sandalwood paste by just, you know, using the sandalwood bark from that tree and you just rub it and then you get the sandalwood. So these are very natural things that can be used and you can totally eliminate these chemicals from your uh, system. The same way using shikakai, sh uh, using the henna for your hair, that will also give a proper glow. The using hibiscus um, the hibiscus flowers and the hibiscus leaves both in the oil and also for your uh, hair to wash your hair. These are all the eco-friendly uh, lifestyles that you can adopt for eliminating the chemicals entirely from your daily life routine. Thank you for your patient listening.